Hi, welcome to Schofield Farm. Today we're going to feed our citrus trees and I wanna take you along with us. This time of year in the spring is the perfect time to feed citrus. See this beautiful orange tree right here? We grow citrus in pots and we grow citrus in the ground and citrus is something that I am super excited about because it is one of the favorite types of fruits for my entire family. We have seven kids and whenever we get anything citrus, it is eaten immediately. So growing our own citrus is a very valuable commodity for us because we just love it. Hey, before I start this video, I just wanted to hop on here and say I am hosting a giveaway right now. If you watch this live over on my Instagram page, it's also at Schofield Farm and it is a hundred dollar gift card or store credit, whatever you'd want to call it to Redwood Seeds. And they are one of my favorite seed companies. I have grown a ton of things from their company in my own garden. I've had great success with them. They're actually local to Northern California, which is really fun to support someone local. Anyway, hundred dollars to them. So go over to my Instagram page if you're watching this live and enter it. I am closing the giveaway April 1st at 11.59 p.m west coast california time so if you see this before then i would love to have you go find that reel you can go see it you can enter and hopefully you will win okay let's get to the real reason of this video right now we're in the end of march and you can see the little buds on the citrus tree four flowers that are about to form they're really all over this and we want to give the tree adequate food so that it can actually produce really good fruit even though this tree is in a pot you want to do the same for trees that are in the ground, but it's a little bit different because they have more nutrition usually available. I always get so excited when I see new leaves growing on my citrus. This is a sure sign that it is springtime. We use Espoma Citrus Tome and Holly Tone for our feeding of our citrus and our blueberries and our hydrangeas. It is organic, which is something that was very important to me to have an organic natural fertilizer and not to have something synthetic. We like to pour it around the drip line so that it's a slow release, slow time release type of fertilizer food. And so as we water our citrus, it will slowly go in deeper and deeper. Now, ideally you would push back the mulch a little bit more than my son did and actually get the fertilizer food into the soil. He did push some back. He is moving some different branches, but I still feel like it was a little more shallow. In this one, you can actually see he gets a little deeper and that's what I want. I want it into the soil, then covered up. We have chickens and they like to scratch around under our citrus trees. So I wanna make sure that this food actually feeds the tree over time and doesn't just feed the chickens, if you know what I mean. We like to begin fertilizing and feeding our citrus trees in February, and then we feed them about once a month to every six weeks until around July or August, just depending on the temperature and our memories. He also got the holly tone and he fertilized our hydrangeas, which are on the north side of our house. They're in mostly full shade, but in our climate, I feel like they really need to not be burnt by our really brutal sun in the summers. And they're doing so much better this year. I'm hoping to get really good blooms by feeding them. We also use holly tone on our blueberries and I really hope for good blueberries this year. We try to feed our blueberries two or three times a year. Sometimes we only get once. And if you've been around here very long, you know I love my potted citrus. Potted citrus needs to be fed probably even more than citrus in the ground, although our in-ground citrus is in alkaline clay soil, so we've really had to work on amending it and feeding it to make it thrive. Can I just say real fast how happy it makes my mama heart when my boys and my little girls are willing to help grow our food. 
Now I found a lot of stores in town have smaller like three pound bags of citrus food. We found this one online and ordered it. I believe it's around 17 to 20 pounds. And because we have so many citrus trees, it was exactly the right size for us. I think we may still have to buy another one before this season is over because we're going through it pretty fast. We currently have 17 citrus trees. So if you do the math, this is not gonna last us very long. But citrus is one of our family's favorite things to eat. So it's super worth it to us to feed them. We really want them to be fruitful. We got about 60 lemons last year. We got about 50 mandarin. We got a handful of limes, a handful of grapefruit, a handful of different oranges. But we are hoping that that is going to increase and increase every year. This is my potted Meyer lemon tree and you can see the buds so nicely because they are pink. And then the new growth is that darker green. Over here are the leaves that were gone because of deer chomping on them and these branches were full of fruit. Well, even these, if you look very closely, have little starts of leaves growing back. So that's so encouraging. So after you feed your trees, it's always essential to water it in. You really want that fertilizer to go down deep and start feeding the roots, getting that soil really healthy. And as I said before, it's so important, especially when you're growing in a container, to feed the soil because the nutrients run out eventually in this container. It's actually even more important to feed citrus grown in containers than it grown in the ground. Although I highly recommend feeding all of your citrus every spring. Besides using a good citratome organic type fertilizer that's really balanced for citrus specifically, it is helpful to use like a blood meal or something very high in nitrogen that is organic. I have found, especially with my Meyer lemon trees, that they have a little bit of yellowing on their leaves after they get through the winter or even in the peak of the summer heat. And if I apply some blood meal, it actually greens them up and makes them so much healthier and so much stronger. And I just feel like it's very, it's very vital. I, for a long time, thought the yellow leaves might be a lack of iron or different minerals. I tried treating those things, but when I did feed them with blood meal, it made a humongous difference, enormous, humongous. I, I can't decide what word to use, but it made such a big difference that now I'm a firm believer in using just a little bit of blood meal if your citrus tree is yellowing like these leaves I'm gonna show you right here. This is my potted Meyer lemon tree. You can see the edges of the leaves are yellowing. I would have thought in years past that was mostly an iron problem, but now because of the results with using blood meal, I think this is mostly a nitrogen issue. Also, a fluctuation in temperature and water seems to do this to Meyer lemons. So we will probably supplement just my lemon trees with a little bit of blood meal in the next few days, see if that greens them up. And when I look at these blossoms here, when I see these blossoms, all I can think of is all that fruit we had during the winter. I hope this tree is just as packed as last year. I have told you in past videos how much I love growing citrus in containers. I will link to those videos for you. I think it is such a great way to make growing citrus more accessible for more people. We do have an in-ground mandarin grove and an in-ground Meyer lemon tree, but I still think that growing in pots is the way to go for most people. My pot of citrus has been more fruitful so far. I bet my in-ground citrus will someday pass the fruitfulness of my potted, but right now, most of our fruit that we harvest is from the potted citrus. Total side note, but camellia are gorgeous this year. They are just packed full of blossoms. I'm especially a fan of this color. I don't know what it's actually called, but it is like a hot pink red and oh, so gorgeous. So gorgeous. Okay, let's go over to the Mandan Grove to water that citrus food in. This is the lone citrus tree. I'm not sure what's gonna make it. The leaves fell off, the trunk is green. We're still fertilizing it, but I don't even see any leaves spudding out and I really hope that changes. Another side note, my chickens got into my pollinator garden and my blueberry garden and they dug up all sorts of stuff. Oh, that rosemary is gorgeous. Oh man, we've gotta to have to clean this up because they went crazy. See those holes right there? chickens. That's what that means. We're going to have a lot of hollyhocks though. 
So as I said, always water in when you feed a tree or you fertilize it. We have irrigation to here, but we had a tractor break part of it. So we're gonna have to hand water it in, unfortunately. Nice rainwater though. Trees love rainwater. I say that this little mandarin tree is doing pretty good. It's actually the one doing the best of mine. It's the oldest one here. Everything else had to be replaced from different freezes that were late. Goodness, I think it was three years ago, two years ago in April. We had a really late freeze, really crazy after everything had leafed out. So I'm very happy with how this one's doing. The others I hope catch up to it. And let me know in the comments if you grow citrus. And I just wanna let you know, feeding trees, you wanna do it at least in California, like February, March, April, May, June, July. That's kind of the rule of thumb. You don't really wanna feed them at the crazy part of heat or the crazy part of cold, but during the time when they start putting on their leaves, they start pushing out buds, that is the best time to give your citrus the food they need to grow. Thank you. I love to hear if you are a fan of citrus like I am because oh, it's so good. I'll see you soon.